That was my 7 days journey into learning anatomy. And this is the words of Magoon in China. Top character illustrators in the industry and the people that I learned anatomy from. And in this video, I will be sharing with you their methods and insights from their colossal course on how to study anatomy for anime characters. To assess my current ability, I decided to do a quick 30 minutes gesture drawing and also draw a full body character from photo reference. And on our last day, I'll do this again to see how much I've improved. On day one, Magoon suggests that we must first build our awareness of the 3D space before getting into anatomy. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 perspectives. But the one that Magoon uses the most and recommends to study is a 3 point perspective, so that's what I'll be doing here. The first exercise is to draw 9 rotating cubes in a line. This helps to familiarize yourself with geometries in 3D space. After finishing one, I did 7 more for each direction. The angled ones were a little tough, but overall this is a solid beginner's exercise. The next thing to do is to draw more cubes, but this time in 3 point perspective. So I put down my guides and just start drawing lines to familiarize myself with 3 point perspective. After feeling somewhat satisfied, I move on to the next level, which was to do this again, but this time freehand. Drawing above the vanishing point was a little confusing for me, but once you can do this comfortably, in theory, you should be able to draw anything in perspective, such as a chair, a guitar, and this Minecraft dog. On day 2, I got straight into anatomy by watching both Magoon's and Chayan's classes on drawing the head. While Chayan focused more on simplification, Magoon focused more on the fundamentals such as the bones and muscles. The one thing that Magoon wants you to really understand is the skull structure. Not so that you're able to draw skulls from scratch, but to understand small things like how the cheekbone causes this iconic puffy cheeks in anime characters, or how the brow ridge is, well, the location for the eyebrows. By studying the skull, you'll be able to tell why things are drawn in a certain way. But after getting through the fundamentals, it's time to learn how to turn this into this. First, draw a rectangular cube, split it 2 by 3 use the guidelines for the eyes and ears. Then draw around the brow ridge, cheekbone, and connect it to the jawline. And finally, draw a sphere to finish off the head. Now with this template, we are free to customize our character however we want. If you want cute characters, draw larger eyes. Otherwise, making the eyes more realistic will make the character look older. The position of the mouth, nose, and eyebrows also affect the age. So be mindful of how you draw the face. So for practice, Chan recommends you to do a bunch in different angles, and to also start adding details. This exercise develops your ability to draw heads and face from any angles. When it comes to the body, there's a lot to go through. So day 3 was me going through Magoon's lecture on anatomy. Just taking notes and notes and more notes. Which made me wonder, am I just memorizing the lessons? Am I gonna remember any of this? But anyways, there are 6 things that you should be mindful of when drawing. Magoon called these the landmarks. From my understanding, landmarks basically helps you connect parts of the body together. First one is the collarbone and how the bone connects to the shoulders. So when you draw the collarbone line, make sure it curves towards the shoulders. Next is the elbow. Be mindful of the shape of the bone when drawing. The same goes for the wrist. The pelvis bone can be seen poking out slightly, creating this raised line on the skin. The kneecap is this rounded triangular shaped bone that raises out from the knee. The two leg bones poke out at the ankle. The inner one is smaller and slightly higher, compared to the outer one which is larger but slightly lower. And if you get these landmarks right, your illustration will look well proportioned. So since today was just a lot of note taking, I decided to finish the day off by putting everything so far into practice. By recreating Magoon's colossal character from scratch. Starting with a 3 point perspective, cues for proportions. Drawing the face, the body, and then refining it. And that's not too bad. The body proportion was probably the most confusing part for me, which is why I will focus more on that in day 4. I started the day by watching Chayan's class on anatomy. With Magoon, we were studying the bones and muscles. With Chayan, we are now simplifying them to fit our characters. I'm not as good as Chayan at explaining this, but I'll try my best to summarize his main points. First thing is the head proportion, which is around 1 to 1.5 without the hair. From here, we'll use the width of the head as the unit of measurement. Moving down, the shoulder is slightly bigger than the head, around 1.6, but this depends on the gender and the, the type torso of hair. is around the height of the head, and the rib well, size depends right on the character's the body shape, so it varies quite a no bit. proportion from it's either around this size. Chan recommends drawing the pelvis as so a part the shape. length and thickness as required. Hey, you! Finally awake. All right, all right. Sorry. Was my explanation that boring? Well, I've summarized my notes into this. It takes time to understand and memorize all of this. So instead, I just have these on the sides and just start drawing. 
Chan recommends practicing each part of the body separately, but without much experience, I was struggling to identify why my drawings didn't feel quite right. So instead, I decided to draw along with Chan's drawings. This way, I have a reference to compare to, which makes identifying the mistakes in my drawings much easier. I'm no expert when it comes to the specific of anatomy, but if you're interested in diving deeper and learning from the pros, I would suggest checking out the courses on Colossal yourself. If you don't already know, Colossal is a platform that offers online classes taught by industry experts. So you'll learn not just fundamentals like anatomy, but also gain exclusive insights into the field and get a peek into the mindset of industry experts. So if you're interested in getting the course, you can use the code below for a discount. According to Chiron, movement is the most important thing in character illustration. So on day 5, I will be focusing on the movement. But how do we create fluid dynamic poses? One of the things that you see a lot in dynamic poses is the twisting body. To practice this, Chiron recommends drawing from photographs of real people. The steps to practice drawing from photographs includes drawing the proportion guides on top of the photographs, redrawing that on your own, then draw the anatomy. Lastly, add in the details. Try to pick photos with a lot of movements and unique angles in order to familiarize yourself with drawings, different angles and perspectives. So for the past few days, I've just been listening and taking notes, so I really want to draw a lot today. I went and grabbed a bunch of photos from Pinterest and just start drawing. My plan here is to draw non-stop. Just draw as much as I can until I'm tired. My aim here is to draw like 20. No, 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 at least 20. No, actually, let's do 30, but... Oh, but 40 would be so nice. Oh, let's go, dude, let's go 50. I made three, and now I'm exhausted. So I decided to stop here and continue my movement study in day six. I had issues drawing limbs in different angles, so to fix that, I grabbed this drawing from Chan's class and just started practicing drawing hands and legs in different angles. And this was super easy. I'm just kidding. This is the most challenging by far. On my first attempt, the thighs looked a bit off, so I fixed the drawing by comparing it side by side to Chan's drawing. Then went back and reviewed the section on thighs anatomy, realized that I didn't understand the muscles, fixed that, and then went back to drawing. And this was my process for this study. Practicing the theory, identifying the mistakes, and reviewing my weak spots. Also, if we're going to talk about angles and movements, we got to talk about Magoon's drawings. A while back, I made a video studying one of Magoon's paintings. At the time, I traced line art for the study, since I didn't understand anatomy. So I wanted to see if I can now draw his character without tracing. Especially these ones with crazy poses and perspectives. This was my favorite exercise by far. Not only was I putting what I learned into practice, I was also drawing like one of my favorite artists. But I have to admit, being able to copy someone else's drawings doesn't mean that I can now draw like them. But at least, I was able to absorb some of their techniques, right? How do I know if any of this was actually useful? Did the past 6 days pay off or was it all for nothing? So there's only one way to find out. First test, the gesture drawing. I was so nervous when I did this. Honestly, I wasn't even sure if I was going to see any improvements. Since I've been mostly drawing boxes slowly, not speed running characters in 1 minute intervals. But compared to the first day, I think it's much better. M maybe. And next test, the dynamic jumping character. There are some weird mistakes here and there, but I was much more confident with my understanding of anatomy. I even added a little cheeky guitar. So let me know what you think. What are some of your favorite ways of studying anatomy? Or how could I improve this study? Overflowing with confidence from knowing basic anatomy, I decided to draw more full body characters. Something that I used to be scared of. Well, I'm still scared of it, but at least I can do it now. And here's my quick drawings after 7 days of anatomy study. The next steps I would take to improve this further would be learning how to color and stylize like the pros. But for now, thanks for watching.